Hey guys, this is Camping15 and I'm back at it with another video for you guys and this is Wow, well, who never thought I'd be making Pokemon? Um for one, I'm a big Pokemon fan. I'm a fan of the games, a fan of the anime. Um yeah, so other than that, I'm going to talk about the Pokemon the series, Sun and Moon, and I'll get into the reason why I'm talking about that, but um one, if you guys are wondering, wow, Cameron315, where the hell have you been? You haven't made a video all last week. The reason why I didn't make a video last week is because I was sick, well, last week, and I did feel better as the week progressed last week, but I just feel like, you know, I was like, F it. Um, let's make a video starting Saturday. No, actually, we'll starting Sunday, but um, yeah. So, um, that's why I've been out and I haven't made a video, like, literally last week. That's why you're like, this guy take a week off or something? Um, so yeah, and then also, if you're wondering, wait, this is a new design setup. Where the heck are you at? You're back in your room in California or something like that. And I'm like, yes, I'm back home. Um, I'm on spring break currently right now from school. So, luckily I was able to go home for just really the weekend and a week. And yeah, so other than that, I'm going to uh, really move on and get up on with the review. So other than that, Pokemon. You know, Pokemon has been something that I just always loved to watch and have fun um, play. From have fun playing, you know, games on the DS, the Game Boy. Um, no, I haven't played, I rarely played any of the Game Boy ones, but the DS, the 3DS, and even the Switch version of Sword and Shield. Um, now you're wondering, why are you not reviewing the Sword and Shield or Pokemon 2019 or the Gen 8 anime of that? Um, quick update, I will actually be reviewing that starting reviews when it gets to episode 20 because I'm still... a little lackluster behind and stuff like that. Although, today's episode, Ash caught... Gengar, so that was cool. Um, I'm gonna start that. <coughs> I'm gonna start that little review series that started with episode 20 because um, it's fine. Um, but yeah, um, but I'm here to talk about Sun and Moon. Now, my ideal thing was to talk about all the other generations and stuff like that. Um, I think when I make the playlist for this for the Pokemon reviews. Um, I'll do the generations, like, you know, the generational seasons. I'll organize them as if where they go, like, Kanto, Johto, um, Hoenn, Sinnoh, um, Unova, uh, Kalos, and Alola. And then, you know, I'll make a whole series review of Gen 8, which is the Gala region. Um, so, yeah. Um, now, Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon. Hmm. What can I say about Sun and Moon that I already don't have mixed feelings about? Now, in terms of the video games, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, which, yes, Ultra Sun and Moon didn't have to be made. Um, yes, I do realize that. Um, even though Ultra Sun and Moon are my favorite, one of my favorite Pokemon games. Um... My thoughts on those games. I love the games a lot. I think the game stories are really good. You know, some of the best, one of the better, you know, Pokemon games when it comes to storytelling. Um, I like the games a lot. Anime, I am mixed about the anime. Um, the Gen 7 anime, it's a mixed anime because one... Let's get to the point, and it's even kind of happening in, well, a little bit in the Gen 8 anime of the fact that there's really no main end game, no main end goal. Um, my thoughts on Gen 7 is, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, there are some things I really liked from Gen 7, from the Gen 7 anime, and there's some things I really do not like about the Gen 7 anime. Now, Gen 7, when it comes to rankings, um, I'm not going to give those yet. Maybe we'll do a top, you know, 10 video or top whatever generation video. Um, when I make that with the, maybe Denzel, or I make that by myself. Um, 
I was lame to go back and rewatch some episodes and stuff like that. Uh, but, um, you know, some things... I, w- I would say Gen... Out of, out of the seven generations, the Gen 7 anime probably is my fifth or sixth... Yeah, well, it's probably my fifth favorite. I actually think about it. It might be my fifth favorite series looking back on it now. I mean, all the pack. Um... So it's 50-50. Like I said, that's why I have mixed feelings on it. Some things made me remind myself from the famous and which I think is the best um, series of Pokemon X, Y, and Z. Um, It has some of those elements in this anime, while some of the other elements um, remind me of Black and White are some of the weaker known series of the anime. And that's not good. Um, like I said, Sun and Moon was the type of anime, well, it was the next generational anime, which was coming off the phenom of Pokemon X, X and Y, anime, or X, Y, and Z, however you call it. It was coming off the the phenomenal series because everybody from, who or everybody who's a Pokemon fan, you know, um, I don't see how you could not like X, Y, and Z. I think there are some people that do not like X and Y as much as a lot of the fandom does. Um, but I, like I said, X, and, X, Y, and Z was my favorite anime series of Pokemon. Um, I think it was the best one because Ash was at his best. He was he acted more mature. He didn't act like he did the previous the, the previous other generations. And, you know, you list loved every character that was essentially in that anime in the Kalos region. And, you know, sadly it didn't pay off in the end where Ash wins the Kalos League Championship. But, hey, um, he does win it here in Alola, so I guess that's something. But they kind of do that because it's the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. Well, it was at the time. Um, but, um, yeah, now... Another reason why I'm making this video, um, because you're probably asking, like, why are you making a video on Pokemon Sun and Moon? Because didn't that show just end, like, months ago? Um, yes, I know. For the sub version, it did, um, which is the Japanese dub. Now, the English dub, it officially ended today, and I was like, you know what? Let me wait till the English dub ends for me to do my thoughts on the Sun and Moon anime. Um... Now, in terms of English dub, some people do not like the Pokemon English dub. They just watched the sub version. I thought the Pokemon English dub for Sun and Moon, it was fine. Um, it wasn't the best dubbing. Um, if you ask me, I think X and Y is one of those other dubs for the English dub of Pokemon that was one of the better season dubs. Um, I guess a quick thing about the English dub. Um, some of the voices... Um, I, and really, that's the only thing you can talk about because it's exactly the same thing. I really don't care much about the script because obviously you have to have some changes to the English dub and the Japanese dub. Um, the music, it was all right. Um, you know, obviously everyone says the superior music is always the Japanese music's musical score of Pokemon. Um, yeah, obviously, I guess because, you know, the anime doesn't want to get copyright strikes against our the company who makes the anime show doesn't give the english dub the rights to use their music which i think is stupid um they have to come with their own musical score obviously you have these some some of the musical scores you have these like playtime type of songs um like i said it was the musical score for the dubs it's not the best. Um, I'm going to be frankly honest. Um, as much as I do like hearing the dub because it doesn't make me have to read the screen for subtitles. Um, I can just call it as it is. The musical score for the Pokemon, you know, especially even now as of late, and it really started after Black and White, the musical scores um, for the anime are not as good as... Um, you know, it's Japanese show counterpart. Um, sucks to say, but the company who does the anime in Japan won't give the English us the rights to have the music played in their in our dub of the English. So that's why you get stuck with these songs where people be like, what? 
or hate. Um, obviously, some of the songs are obviously, you know, ripped off from the video game, just like some kind of ge anime game remix of this thing. Um, the dubbing of the voices, um, obviously, you have the typical Ash voice that's been voicing Ash really since Diamond and Pearl. I'm not really, I don't really mind it. I kind I like the voice. It's, you know, stuff like that. Um, I will say um, Ash is not much. Well, actually, I'll talk about that in the character section but um you know the I, I i have to i should look at the actor who plays ash now but i think i like her i think her best performance was like i said x and y um when she dubbed ash um i guess the the other voices he always english dub voice is fine um he's kind of a comedic character in this anime um but his voice was fine when he needed to have a serious voice it was pretty serious um, I thought that really the whole cast of characters, with the exception a little bit of Lily's voice, um, all the voices fit fine with me, like I said, with the exception of Lily. I thought Lily was the only character in this anime for the dub that voice was, like, okay, that's weird. You'd think they'd give her more of a girly voice, but... Her voice, not to say it sounds kind of gruff, and I know the <coughs> voice actor <coughs> who does Lily is doing the best she can with the work she was, with the voice she was given, but I wasn't really a fan of the English dub voice actor of Lily's voice. I don't know. It just, it sounded a little bit too dry for me and stuff like that, and it's like, it doesn't sound like what an ideal girl would possibly sound like, especially it didn't sound like the way it would say, Oh, uh, the it, it didn't sound the way of the English dub voice of Lily. I thought I thought they'd make a Lily voice sound like a pretty shy girl, a pretty soft-spoken girl. Um, they didn't really do that. Um, I did. I think that was the only voice I did not really like. All the other voices fit with me. Kakui's voice, especially his English dub voice, it sounded like what I thought Kakui might actually possibly sound like. Um, Lusamine's voice, I guess it was all right. Um. I kind of a little bit of issues, but eh, it is what it is. Um, but she sounds more like an adult woman than anything. Um, you know, all the other characters, they sound fine to me. Um, they, their English dub voices sound fine to me. Um, I guess Lily is the only dub voice that I do not like. Um, because I remember first hearing it, I'm like, yikes, the English dub voice of Lily is not what I expected it to be. Um, so, you know, yeah, see, the Lily English dub voice, it can get really, like, low pitch, and then really high pitch, which can get kind of annoying at some cases. Um, so, it, you know, the actor, like I said, she tries to play Lily like she's a soft-spoken girl, but it kind of doesn't work. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm critiquing, like I said, I know she's doing the best she can with what she's given, but, yeah. Um, other than that, yeah. Now, like I said, this anime is coming off the phenomenal X and Y anime, and it needs needed to, and the further question mark, people are wondering, hopefully, is Sun and Moon going to be just as good, maybe, if not better than Sun and Moon? I mean, X and Y? There were some things that were, and there were some things that really weren't. There was only one case that I thought Sun and Moon was better than X and Y. And that was kind of when it came to the, really, the climactic art world, especially, you know, the final battle in the show and stuff like that. Um, I thought it was better than some of the more better battles in um, X and Y. Um... So that's one thing I liked about it. Um, but I guess the one start off which people talk about the most about this series is the animation change because the animation, especially when the first poster came out when the show first started, Ash did not look like Ash whatsoever because people were like, uh, this is Ash? He's looking a lot more derpy than usual. And yes, um, he looks more like a kid in this than in X and Y. He looked like a mature like, I guess, teenage boy. Um, and this is why a lot of people kind of fell out with the series again when they were just getting back on. They're like, I can't stand the Ash design. I It, it just doesn't work with me. Um, 
my thoughts on the Ash Sun and Moon design, it's takes some time to grow on. Um, I got used to it, but still I was like, eh, it's not, it's not the best Ash design. If you ask me, it's that it's his weakest animational design because everyone around him looked fine. They looked at, they looked just as fine as if they were ripped out of the, um, you know, Gen 6 anime. Um, they, they all looked fine. Now, the reason why they changed Ash's little character design, a bit, like, a lot, is because they gave him all these funny faces things to have the show be more cartoony. And that's the one thing about this show that is funny, but sometimes can be used a little bit too much, like, overused, which is the facial expressions and the funny face. I don't know why it was worth it to change his Ash's face design. They thought they could have just kept the typical Ash design, you know, he had from X and Y, but probably make it, I guess, shorter, you know, but it is what it is. I thought everybody else looked fine. You know, they looked like as if like, I'm because I was watching it for the most part, I'm like, everyone looks like that they were from the X and Y anime. Ash is the only one that doesn't look like he's from the X and Y anime. Um, you know, they could have just added that little bit of touch. Um, the animation for the most part is fine though. It's still as much improved as, you know, if anything else, um, you know, the story, I guess, of the anime. Now the anime is kind of split into two, like really three different arcs or seasons. The first part of the season, the first part of the season arc is the Pokemon school arc, which you can probably say is the weakest arc out of all of them. Um, which starts off with Ash going to the Pokemon school and doing a few trials here and there and catching some Pokemon. Like I said, there were some good episodes in this arc, but not much. Um, not a lot of good episodes um, to start off this first part. The next part we get into the Lily, it's like the little Lily mini backstory arc with, you know, from the bit, from the games, if you all, which had a little bit of different touch of the games. Um, in this, they explain why Lily can't touch Pokemon, because in this anime, Lily can't touch Pokemon because she's afraid of Pokemon. Um, they explain that she can't touch Pokemon, and this because Nihilego, the Ultra Beast, um, essentially kind of scared the ever-living daylights out of her and prevented her from touching Pokemon because of that traumatic experience. Um, and then we get into the whole Nebby, you know, like I said, the game plot with behind Nebby and, um, you know, the whole absorption of Lusamine boss battle they had in the Nihilego world. Um, they have that. Um, in some cases, the games kind of do that better. In some cases, it was still a pretty cool arc to see. I thought that was when the series actually picked up, actually, if you ask me. Um, then they have a nice little mini, like, arc where they just kind of chillax and do nothing. Um, and then they go into the Ultra, the Ultra Guardians arc, which essentially is, it was an okay arc. Um, it was, I would say, I'll, I'll rank my arcs in terms of what I liked. Um, you know, that arc is when the Ultra Beasts just come out into the world and essentially, um, you know, try to wreak havoc. Then next, we get a little mini, the little mini Necrozma arc, which takes the story of um, Ultra Sun and Moon with a little few differences. Um, you know, Poi Paul actually makes an appearance and is on Ash's team for a while, and then he goes off and leaves when he's fulfills his duty and then the last arc is the pokemon or which is like anything the alola pokemon league arc and then that's when the series close off um like i said um the show is mixed because of that consistency like you get the show despite having a few good episodes here and there in the first arc that first arc was a total flop because it was literally, to me, it was all filler. And this is kind of the thing about this anime, and which is kind of what the Gen 8 anime is kind of doing right now, too. 
There's no main goal. There's no main purpose in this anime. Well, actually, there kind of really isn't. There kind of, it's just, to me, there's kind of really no main goal. Now, in the comment section, you can explain the main goal as best you can. I don't think there is no main goal. I think the main goal is essentially get to the Pokemon League. Or, well, what can I say? There is, <coughs> there is no <coughs> main goal. It's just go to school. That's it. And then the main goal is essentially what they're doing in that plot of the episode, or what if the arc is centered around. The main goal of the school arc. Um, just go to school where Ash meets some new friends, come across Team Rocket, um, you know, catches some new Pokemon and stuff like that. Um, yada, yada, yada. Lusamine, um, Lily, Nihilego arc, you know. That's, you know... Stop Faba from using Lily for getting Nihilego, you know, Ultra Beast arc, um, you know, um, stop the Ultra Beast. And then there's no main goal. There's no main purpose. You know, as opposed to the past six seasons of Pokemon, there was always a main goal, albeit it was the same exact goal for all of them. It was Ash, travel with Ash with his group of friends in that anime you watch them you watch either the side you watch the main girl side companion and ash go through the trials and tribulations of doing whatever they were doing whether it's a contest or gym battles to get to the main competition to hopefully strive to win it which some more than likely ends in a loss um you know but at the end of the day there was a main purpose there was a main goal ash was striving to in that region and that's you know even though it was you know the same old same old it was still we know we what we had to do was the next episode go to the next gym yada 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 even though we had filler in between some of the it was good this there's no main goals ash does one trial and then he's like you know what let me just continue doing trials well he doesn't every now and then you see him do a trial and it's like not consistent it's like I would see, I thought the anime would be this. Um, Ash goes to Alola. Um, Lily might be the girl's side companion, and I don't know, they they might, you know, have some makeup, some new character to be the boy side companion, and you know, have the three man group again. And this totally changes. Uh, uh, like I said, you know, Ash goes through all the trials. You know, does the grand trial after beating all the trials. And then, you know, through and through, you know, coming across Kukui every now and then. Um, Kukui makes the Pokemon League and then, boom, there you go. I thought that's how it would turn out. No, it was something like that, but different. The one difference is the trial captains who are Kyoe, Sophocles, Lana, and Mallow. Um, they're all just regular kids going to school. They're not trial captains in this anime, in this anime like they were as opposed to their game counterparts. Um, I guess it helps them flesh out the characters and, you know, it, it helps flesh out the characters a bit more because, you know, that's something we rarely got in the video games because we only knew a little bit about a few characters, some of these, from those characters. Like, I think the only character we spend the most time on out of those four is probably it's probably Mallow maybe the most but then again in the games they don't focus on them all that much it's like do their trials and then beat their trials then okay here's your Z crystal goodbye and you never see them again um you know um that so I guess the one thing I will say is I like better is they made at least they made um, the trail captains um, have more importance where they were companions to Ash um, and friends to him than, you know, trial captains who appear one time and be like, OK, we'll probably never see you again in the anime, um, you know, like some gym leaders in the show. Um, but um, it was nice. Now, 
I guess we'll talk a little bit about my each character. Um, I'll go into depth with each. Well, not into depth, but all of them. Ash, typical Ash, you know, wants to be Pokemon Master, comes across, but he does school because he wants to do Professor Kakui, and he kind of lives with Professor Kakui, and later on his wife, Burnett. Um, Sophocles, he's kind of, you know, a nerd. You know, he strives to, you know, really, you know, push himself and stuff like that. Some cases he can come across as a scaredy cat and stuff, some other things. Kiawe, he's a hard rock dude who, you know, essentially tries his best at everything. He's obviously one of the many rivals in the show Ash has. Um, and he strives to get stronger and pushes himself. And he's very comedic. Um, he's more comedic. Now, I thought he'd be, you know, really serious because when the show first started off, he was a serious character. Then when you get more into, the, you know, as the show progresses, he ends up becoming more of a comedic character, if anything. And I guess it's funny for the time being. Um, Mallow, she is a girl that strives to, you know, obviously cook and learn new things. And she's a really lighthearted girl who's funny. And I will say she has, I guess, you know, if you ask me, she right now, she's like literally best girl of the show. Um, you know, she's best girl material of that show because especially when you dive into the whole backstory about her mother and stuff like that, that was some emotional stuff. That was one of the better episodes they did. That was one of the better episodes Sun and Moon did. Um, it was emotional. So obviously Mallow, if you ask me, Mallow's my favorite girl companion in this anime, not as a whole. Serena's my favorite girl companion, but she's the my favorite girl companion in this anime because she's got literally best girl material. Um, second best girl material in this anime would be Lily. Um, I'm obviously, it's, her story is kind of different on the aspect is she's still shy, but she doesn't like touching Pokemon, touching Pokemon, you know, it scares her until she eventually one-on-one starts developing as a character and starts touching Pokemon only to lose that ability to touch Pokemon again. When she comes across the old Nihilego again, and then she gets more character development, and yeah. Now, I guess another negative or nitpick thing is we do see Lily in her Z form, you know, every now and then in the in the anime. But you'd think after she goes into her Z form, um, she would stay in it after they get to that part of the story. Now she goes like I think after they were done with the whole Nihilego arc. I don't know what arc you call that. The I'm just gonna call it the Silgaleo. Nebi, I'm just going to call it the Nebi arc. I'm just going to call it the Nebi arc. Um, when you get done with that arc, after the next, the next episode after that arc is over with, Lily's back in her regular design. Her long-haired, regular first dress before she goes into her Z-powered form, you know, self. And I think the characters make a reference to why she's in that design. I don't remember if they do, but I think they make a reference to why she's in that design. She's like, eh, I just kind of want to be in it because blah, blah, blah. Um, I think they personally should have just kept her in her Z form design for the rest of the series. Um, it is what it is. She does change her hair and she does go back to it every now and then, you know, as I guess some kind of, now in the anime they say it like she uses it some kind of state where she uses it where she has full confidence and full belief in herself or something like that. Um, it is what it is. It's like, okay. Yeah, you could just be in it the entire time. I actually like that design much more than I like the, your other design. Um, you know, stuff like that. And Lana, she's the nice jokester, quiet girl that kind of keeps to herself and stuff like that. And stuff like that. If you ask me, she acts more like Robin from One Piece. You know, she's kind of quiet, you know, soft-centered, making jokes all the time or making, you know, those dresses like, hmm. I wonder if we'll get into trouble because of this situation. They're like, why are you thinking of that? You know, stuff like that. Now, their partner Pokemon, um, obviously Ash and Pikachu. Kiowe's partner Pokemon in this is a Lolan Marowak. It was like a fight between him, Charizard, and Turtonator. Um, Mallow's main Pokemon is Serena from... I forgot the first evolution. Um... um Sophocles, I don't know, it's like a tie between Toka Demaru and Vicavolt as his main mon, or his main companion mon, I don't know who it is. Lily's is easy, it's her Alolan Vulpix, um, which 
I would thought they would pay it off at the end of the series where it would evolve into a Lola Ninetales, but it doesn't. Um, maybe if we ever come across Lily again sometime in the series, if they decide to bring her back, um, maybe we'll see her snow, her Alolan Vulpix as an Alolan Ninetales. Um, Lana's main Pokemon is Poplio, which later evolves through the line that gets to, um, my least favorite one, um, Crap, I'm trying to remember, um, Primarina. Um, is that all the characters I talked about? Yes, I believe that's all the characters I talked about. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of really for that, the characters. Um, they do all show that they're best, obviously really close best friends, especially when you watch the final episode of Sun and Moon. Um, you can all see that they were all really close and they were all really, really good friends and they had a blast being with each other. Um, if there's anything that does get it right, um, they had to show the family implication like X and Y had. They acted like one big happy family in this, even though they were all friends. Um, you know, I, I guess the next thing I can talk about, well, I'll guess get the way out of Team Rocket. Team Rocket, again, is more used for comedic purposes. It sucks to say that there are going to be comedic purposes for the probably the, until the show, until they decide to end off the anime. Heck, even in the Gen 8 anime, they are um, comedic. Again. Again. You know, I just kind of hate the whole trope at the end of the anime. You know, Giovanni calls them. He's like, I've been very impressed with the work. Come back to headquarters to show me the results you've done. I'm like, results? They haven't done Jack Diddley Squad. What results are you talking about? If honestly, you'd think you would have you fired them a long time ago. <sighs> all I ask, I think all, especially the more mature Pokemon fan, I think all they ask is, can we have a serious Team Rocket for once in our life? Can we just have a serious Team Rocket? And it sucks to say that the, the one time we get a serious Team Rocket was Black and White, which was the worst series in Pokemon. How can you make the one of the worst series, but one of the best highlights of the show of the series, well, in the, especially in the first half of Black and White, was Team Rocket. Team Rocket was literally, actually a legit threat in the first half of Black and White. Second half of Black and White, that's when they went back to, goodness gracious, their comedic routine. Heck, they even changed it back up from their black outfits to their white outfits, which the black outfits look really badass, honestly. I mean, I know I'm saying that in a Pokemon video, but let's be honest. Their black outfits were the best looking outfits. And they, it was the, that was the peak. That was the peak when Team Rocket was at. In black and white. How can black and white get Team Rocket right? But everything else can. I'm just saying, you, can you make Team Rocket more of a threat instead of just a comedic, you know, two bumbling idiots kind of thing? Now... Their main Pokemon are Marini and Mimikyu. Um, Mimikyu obviously is the type of Pokemon that attacks James all the time and stuff like that. And then Mimikyu is Jesse's Pokemon that always wants to attack Pikachu. Now, they did... Now, I will say this. Sun and Moon were very inventive with how they did the blasting off scenes. Instead of them getting always beat and say, Oh, we're blasting off again! You know, um, they used Beware. But where is kind of like their little whole thing? But where was the MVP of this show? Um, they always found some way to plug in Beware to have some sort of way he gets them out of these, you know, situations where they're blasting off again. Or he just does these real, or well, she does these really interesting things. And the Beware was the funniest thing. It was in the final episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon. It was really emotional um, when Team Rocket had to say their goodbyes because. You know, James was trying to explain to Marini that, yo, no, he had to go. While Marini thought, like, oh, wait, I can be able to go with James. And then um, Mimikyu had that final battle with Pikachu. And then Meowth had that one talking to him. It's like, see, he just got to accept with who you are. It was pretty emotional for that, too. And then probably one of the more emotional scenes was when they finally said goodbye to Beware. Because Beware actually embraced them and hugged them. Not crushed them like he did at first. But he actually hugged them. And, you know... And then I guess the one last funny thing they did was they, you know, he made them get into the balloon and he started throwing them and he threw them to Kanto. 
which was funny. Um, so obviously, I guess that and that aspect, Team Rocket had a little mini family there too. Um, now I guess the slice of life stuff for Team Rocket, that is really nice. I like that. But when it comes to, you know, them trying to capture Pokemon, that's when they become bumbling idiots and not a lot of people are fans of that. Um, you know, because it's the same trope. It's the same trope. They do it all the time. Team Rocket is just there to further Ash's Pokemon to possibly evolve when they get stuck in a predicament that they can't get out of, essentially. Um, that's it. Um, Ash's team. Now, his team consisted of Pikachu, Rowlet, Incineroar, and this I'm talking about his final team. Incineroar, Lycanroc, um, Mel, Melmetal, and um, um, crap. Poipool's final evolution. Um, I can't remember it. I, I can't. I can't remember it. Um, Poipool's final evolution. Um, those were his six Pokemon in the region. Um, it's a diverse team. Um, for the long, well, one he doesn't have a water type whatsoever on this team, and it was funny because people were speculating is they gonna bring Greninja back for it. Um, so uh, yeah, um, his team is pretty diverse. Um. More the main hard hitters of his team are his Incineroar and his Lycanroc. But for the longest time, it was the Toracat um, until the final few episodes when it fin well the final battle against Kakui, he finally evolved into a Lycanroc. You know, you would think they would have paid that off earlier, but um, it is what it is. Um, now um, the thing is, this team it's all right. It's not one of his best. Pokemon generational teams of a region um, in the Alola region. It's diverse. It has the exception of really two Pokemon from Kanto. Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, obviously, Ash gets the exclusive Dust Form like a Rock Form, too. Um, he does get the Ultra Beast Poipool on his team, especially its Evolve Form when it evolves and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then he gets the, you know, the Pokemon Go Pokemon at the time, which was Meltan, which is now Melmetal and stuff like that. Um, now, when the show ends, he leaves his po he leaves all the, them in Alola. Um, Poipo always went back to his home world with the other, you know, Poipols and even the, the evolved form where the where um, the Necrozma is. Um, Full power in the cross moves. Um, but yeah, that's um that's what happened there. Um, like I said, his team is it's an interesting bunch. I'm really starting to like I'll say this, but it's one of it's not one of her his better known teams. Rowlet, he kind of reminded me of Oshawa. Not that that's a bad thing, but um he was kind of the Oshawa. He just kind of fell asleep a lot and stuff like that. Now all his Pokemon had all character development moments, especially Litten being the most one, the best, you know, Pokemon that got the character development. Um, that was after the Stoutland died. That was one of the better episodes in the first half of the show. Um, and you just join this Litten throughout its journey as evolving to a Toracat. And they really pay it off at the end when he evolves into Incineroar. Um, it still kind of sucks he doesn't get the win over Kukui's Incineroar because they always hyped it up as, you know... Him wanting to strive to get stronger than um, Kakui's Incineroar um, or you know, Mass Royal and stuff like that. And stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, Rockwell was probably his second best, you know, was the second best Pokemon who got character development. Especially when it was in the whole Lycan Rock thing because they put him against, because they kind of did the whole thing where they put him against, you know, Gladion's Lycan Rock. And stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, what was another thing I liked? What was another thing I liked? Um, I, well, actually talking about Gladion a bit. He is a little bit different um, as opposed to his in-game counterpart. One, he's not a part of Team School, Team Skull in the anime as opposed to his game counterpart. Um, and he kind of is his own person. And the crazy thing is... Um, He's more interactive with Lily even when he first meet her for like the longest time. Now for the first now, my only thing with Gladion is goodness, he I guess went on his own and stuff like that. I mean he became emo boy because of I guess his dad. Um 
you know, the other thing, um, you know, that. Um, another thing I liked, um, I guess, was the... Well, I, another thing I liked a lot was Team Skull, especially... Um, Oh, crap, I'm trying to remember his name. Guzma. Gu Guzma. Um, Guzma's really... His story and his backstory when you get into it is really good. You know, it, I, I like it a lot. Um, that, that whole backstory where, you know, he feels like he was an outcast and he feels like he couldn't... He, he, he didn't want to do the um, challenges because he just wasn't as strong as the next person. He wasn't... As, he, he wasn't really the best trainer and, you know, he wants to throw, you know, Kakui's little a low league down because he feels like it's not worth it. Um it was a nice he has a nice, you know, character development arc given to him and stuff like that. Um like I said, another one of my favorite episodes was the um Milo episode where she kinda talks to her mom. Like I guess her mom who comes back from I guess, you know, heaven or something like that. Um, because, you know, to explain to her, like, you know, it wasn't, you know, I didn't want, I didn't want you to be always upset at me and stuff like that. Um, it was, it was something like that. It was, you know, it was an interesting episode that they make people appear from the afterlife. And that's when we kind of get built into the Mon theory with like how he's gone because Gladion and Lily's dad does not appear whatsoever in this anime. I thought they would pay that off. I thought they would pay it off, but they paid they try to pay it off in a way where Lucimine, Gladion, and Lily at the end, at the final episode, they take this ferry cruise to go find, you know, Mon. Um, because for the longest time, that's like one of the biggest mysteries in Sun and Moon, which kind of was paid off in the game a bit, where the, or like, where the heck Mon was and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, another thing I liked is I love the Kakui Burnett Ash family dynamic because, like I said, it was like his Alola family, um, and it was really sad when he said goodbye to them before he left on the airplane because, you know, um, Burnett was like crying; she was in tears and stuff like that. The fact that, you know, she didn't want Ash to go, but she knew she had to go. It was like, essentially, she knew she had to let her Alola son go. And it was a nice emotional scene, you know, you really see that they really were a family and stuff like that. And it's like, well, shoot, you know, Burn. And I think it's funny because I think some people are like, wow, Burnett shows more, you know, love and more care to Ash than Del Delia or Delia ever showed to Ash in the first place. Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, now, Ash's mom and Professor Oak, they do make random appearances every now and then. Um, Brock and Misty made an appearance, like, two times. Two times in this anime. You're telling me you can bring back Brock and Misty. Now, albeit that's for the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. You can bring those two back, but you're telling me you can't bring Serena back. We're not going to get Serena again. And, heck, we've even been to an episode in the newest, in the newest um, anime where I think they did a contest thing. They went to Hoenn. Currently, she'd be in Hoenn as of now. Um, I don't know canonically if she's still in Hoenn, um, unless she went back to Cal. See, I hope that's the one thing they do. That's the one thing I hope they do is they go back to bringing back characters from previous from the past generation. They stopped that since Black. They stopped that in X and Y. They stopped that because they didn't bring Iris back, and that was the kind of main thing. They just randomly stopped doing that. Well, in X and Y, the final, the final episode, they brought Silent back, but who wants Silent? You know, you know stuff like that. Um, you know, yeah, you know, it, it was it, it was interesting to see how that they had that sad goodbye. The final episode was one of the better episodes, if not one of the top five episodes. The, out of the top 10 episodes of the goodbye and stuff like that. Um, I guess I closed the video. I guess one of the better arcs was the Pokemon League arc because, like I said, Ash finally, and I mean finally, won a freaking, you know, League Championship. And it was funny because after he beat Gladion to win it, he was like, wait, what happened? And I'm like, the dude is so shook. He, didn't, he won the League that he couldn't even believe it. It's like he broke the fourth wall and he's like, wait. I thought I was loose. 
Now, they made him win the Pokemon League in Alola. One, I guess you can say because it's the first one. And then two, mostly because at the time, like I said, it was the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. So what better way to do it to them to make Ash win the Alola League for 20 to celebrate 20 years of Pokemon? So it took him 20 years to finally win his first league championship. Will he do it? You know, stuff like that. Um, you know, right now his goal is to essentially get into the Pokemon League championships and fight Leon. I feel like they'll make him fight Leon into a close-knit battle, and then he'll probably end up losing. Um, I That's my thoughts. I'll talk more about that when I do my reviews on that. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, that's really all I gotta say for this anime. There was some good things. There were some bad things. Um, but all in all, it was, like I said, a mixed anime. It's a mixed bag of peanuts. You know, some people really like this anime and they like the things that they do in this. Well, some people just don't like it, whether it's the animation or just the point that there's no purpose in the anime. Um, you know, stuff like that. Like I said, there's character building moments and character development moments. There's no main storyline plot like there's no main thing Ash is striving to do to go for you know that's really it um but Sam Moon after looking back at it now it was it was an okay Pokemon series and like I said it's my fifth favorite one um it's fine for what we were given um you know it just felt really like a huge bunch of filler that's what it was like a huge bunch of filler and I know Sun and Moon, in terms of the games, they weren't really, you know, they weren't really vast because they didn't have the gems in it. But, you know, they still could have made it to where the trial, you, you do your trials, your little, the small mini trials, and then you fight the Kahuna to do the grand trial. But it's like, you know, Ash would do one trial, if not just really one trial, or not do the trial altogether. He'd just fight the grand, he'd just fight the Kahuna and do the grand trial. That's it. So, yeah. Other than that, Pokemon Sun and Moon, the anime, it was fine for what we were given, but there were some things that could have been better. But still, 2019, they're doing some things that could are, that are cool, but like I said, could be better. 2019 has no main point. So far, the main point for Ash, get to the Pokemon League Championships to fight Leon. Now, what I would like is... You know, you have to have some prerequisite to do it. Like, you know, he has to fight the Galar League gyms. You know, why don't we go back to that? But all in all, we're going around all different regions. One minute we're in Unova, another minute we're in Hoenn, another minute we're in Kanto. Right now they're stationed really in Kanto. Um, they make a few appearances in Galar. I would thought, you know, they'd make him fight the gym leaders again. It still seems like they're on the whole... Ash has no gold thing, but other than that, that's it. So other than that, I'm gonna get out of here. I spent enough time talking about Pokemon Sun and Moon, the anime. Um, if you do want to watch that, um, I don't know where you can catch the Japanese dubbing of it, um, but for the English dub, if you're intrigued to see the English dub of it, you can go to the Disney Now app, um, and you know if you have a TV provider. Um, you can watch it off the Disney Now app. Um, if you have a cable provider, I guess, watch it off your cable off demand. They should have every episode. And then two, um, I guess the third one is, I have AT&T Now app. If you have that, you can find, I think, almost every episode from every season on that. So you can rewatch that on there. Um, but the Disney Now app is probably the best thing if you have a TV provider. Um, that's probably the best way to watch that because they have all, they have everything about Pokemon. They have from really the first season to that because technically now, I guess, you know, Disney, Disney doesn't have the, all the rights to Pokemon, but they have the TV rights to Pokemon now because it's not on Cartoon Network no more. Um, but, um, yeah, so, um, that's how you can watch the English dub of it. Um, like I said, the English dub, in terms of the English dub, it was all right. It was, it was okay. You know, I think some other English dub episodes, 
English dubs of the C Pokemon series are better. But other than that, yeah, that's it. So other than that, I'm going to get out of here. This has been the Camp Camper 15. If you like this video, leave a like. If there's a comment you want to leave video about this series of Pokemon, leave a comment. All right, let's hit that subscribe button to get more Pokemon content. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.